season is now in full swing, and I'm excited. I made a list of the top Golden Globe nominees on a piece of paper, but then when I went out to get my mail, a big mean dog ran up to me and stole the list. I think it was a neighbor dog. Anyway, don't worry. I have a very sharp memory, and I think I can remember them all. The films that walked away with the most Golden Globe noms were, let's see, uh, Socially Networking, what? Uh, David O. Russell's The Fighter Man, <laughs> Interception, <laughs> the Natalie Portman film Black Swami, uh, The King's Speech Impediment, <laughs> and My Kids Are Okay. My Kids Are Okay? Johnny Depp Angelina Jolie film, The Accidental Tourist, was also nominated <laughs> for several awards, which puzzled a lot of people, since that movie apparently wasn't very good. <laughs> and let's not forget the Cher film, Grotesque, which got three nominations. <laughs> All right, uh, Chad, you may want to fall asleep or take a light doze, because here's what's about to happen for the next 45 seconds. Wade oh and I are gonna rip, <laughs> Wade and I are gonna rip the a-hole out of the Hollywood Foreign Press oh, and yeah, the Golden Globes because I really think that it's about time people realize what a horrible, horrible organization they are. You realize? Okay, I mean, can you say something before Wade goes nuts? True Grit, no nominations. The oh. Tourist, three. And why did the Tourist get three nominations? Why, Wade? Because they've just got to get Angelina and Brad to their dinner. That's it. The end. The end. That's why. That's it. And why? And <coughs> Burle why did Burlesque get nominated for anything? They've just got to get Cher to their dinner. And what's even worse? What's <laughs> even worse is that Michael Douglas gets nominated for Best Supporting Actor, who's been going undergoing this horrible cancer battle. God love him. Why was Michael Douglas nominated for a Golden Globe? Wade. So they can get him to the dinner. That's right. <laughs> a cancer victim, a cancer survivor, crossing our fingers, showing up to a dinner. It's a big moment for the Golden Globes. God, to the worst. Uh, I, this is. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna spill a few things here. I, I have to be kind of prudent about this. Um, the the Golden Globes are given out by the Hollywood Foreign Press. They are not film critics. They are a group of people, a very very tight knit group of people who, for s d decades, close to a century now. What is it? Sixty years or something? They've been doing. Sixty this? years too many. Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, they they are basically just foreign journalists who have this close knit group. And they have managed through their television deal with Dick Clark Productions, who they're now suing, stupid them, to g develop a credibility that they don't really deserve. There are about 86 some people, some of whom are legitimate journalists, okay? Some of them are friends of ours. You know, Mike Goodrich, who's a member of LAFCA and who runs a Screen, uh, you know, Screen, Screen International, International sure. is, a, is a real critic and a real journalist and a great editor and terrific writer. And he's one of the legit people in the group. But, the, he, you know, the tail can't wag the dog here. This has been going on now for decades. And people used to say, well, they're the harbinger of the Oscars. Well, they haven't been for the last few years, ever since they compressed the award season. It used to be Golden Globes given out at the end of January. Academy voters then maybe pay attention to the Globe winners by the time nominations then are, are due in, in mid-February. And then March is when the Oscars are given out. Well, now, Academy Award nominations come out about the same time that the Globes give their awards, which means Academy members have to see all the same films before the Globes have announced their winners. And now, suddenly, Academy members are making up their own minds without necessarily having any kind of residue from the Globes, which puts more power in the hands of the SAG Awards, actually, because so many actors belong to the Academy, such a large percentage of the Academy are actors, that the SAG Awards seem to have much more clout now in determining who the eventual Best Picture winner is going to be. So that and the rise of the Critics' Choice Awards from the broadcast film critics, uh, I think, is, is really now, dampening the... Uh, what the about awards. your awards? Let's talk about your awards, because you Laughter. are one of the most legit, on Sunday, prestigious... On Sunday, the LA film critics were it for a few seconds until Monday when the uh, New, New York, York film, film critics were it for a few seconds, and then the Golden Globes stole everybody's thunder on Tuesday. Okay, and who did you guys vote for? Let's get some Social breakdowns. Network, it's running the table on the critics' and awards. And can you say what you guys voted for? Were we, were, we, we, we were big on the King's speech. I was big on Black Swan and the King's speech. Yeah, and I was big on... You know, Other disagreements with your own... Lafka? You, you, well, oh, you yes. Know, uh, you know what? It yeah. was wide open. The voting this year was wide All open. over the map. And it was very interesting what movies and performers did not get much love from the group. Like we were saying before, how I was very surprised that Natalie Portman got very little love in the group. 
mm -hmm. within the group. I was uh, very surprised also that uh, Chad Vader is waiting to speak again. I yeah. told you to go to sleep. It's all right, Chad. I told there you to take it down. Is it 2011 yet? <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, happy new year. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we were surprised uh, what films did not get much love. It matters what's in the emails when the emails float around between the group before we vote. Because those emails, depending on how credible the person is who's sending it, they do motivate other members to take certain things seriously. I don't think that uh, Mother would have gotten as much love had not so many members of the group who really do command respect said, you gotta watch this, you gotta go see it, you gotta really give this film some, some attention. And it wound up winning Best Actress for, uh, for uh, Kim Hai-ja. As and she and deserved very it. deservedly. That is true. All right, Chad, uh, wake up. What else is going on? Time's Man of the Year for 2010 is none other than Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, and subject of the criti critically lauded film, The Social Network. Could this accolade affect the Academy's judgment when handing out Oscars in March? I don't know. I tried to reach Mr. Zuckerberg for comment, but apparently he doesn't have a Friendster account, <laughs> so I couldn't contact him. You know, awesome. I... <laughs> I, I Does think... he have a Plaxo account? Maybe Plaxo. Plaxo? Yeah, I've that? gotten those emails. I need your Plaxo information. I'm like, I have no idea who you are. I don't know what like just happened. LinkedIn, Plaxo. I don't know what Mark's just happened. Not even, Mark just finally got on Facebook. Okay, move, anyway. It is true. <laughs> um, here's uh, the thing. I think the reason the social network's going to win, best picture, you do. Oscar-wise. You do? I do. Really? I think that because, because I think the Oscars want to feel relevant. I think they want younger people to watch the show. And I think the Academy now has enough younger voters in it young enough, under 45, let's say, that would uh, really want Social Network to win. Well, we will have an Oscar show. We're definitely going to do an Oscar special where you guys yeah, will give all your picks. I, I'm still not feeling it. I'm feeling like that film has peaked, and I'm feeling like uh, the King's Speech is the one that's really going to run the table. I, f my, I feel like the King's Speech, and I, it's, it's such a terrific movie, no doubt about it, yeah. but I feel like the King's Speech, and it's one of my favorite of the year, but I'm just saying, I feel like it's a little too, there's something about it that's a little too pat for Oscars to give it best picture. It feels like one of those movies. Well, it feels like one of those movies that if it had been made in 1968, it would have won best picture. And in 1985 or 83 or 84, it would have won best picture. The question is, is the Academy membership going to be inclined toward that classic, traditional, period, actory movie for best picture this year? And I, I feel like it it is kind of a wide open race in some categories, but that, there it's a two horse race. It's again between Fincher and, uh, and, Tom Hooper. and Tom Hooper. And you know, nobody knows who Tom Hooper is, but Fincher has as many people who hate him as love him. And when you have real love hate directors that way, it tends to kind of hurt their odds. Because remember, Best Picture, you rank them. You go one through 10. You don't sort of say, I want this film to win. You rank them. And if enough people rank Fincher, near the bottom because they don't like him because they've had problems working with him it's gonna really really hurt his films chances I don't think anyone's gonna put the King's Speech down low uh, that could be true by the way so. speaking of down low get low good movie uh, yeah. all right so uh, Chad you got one more story for us right regale us do. go Gizmodo reports that George Lucas my personal best friend <laughs> has been buying the film rights to dead actors <laughs> and plans to resurrect them real spooky like in future movies using 3D technology. Have you ever wanted to see Barbara Stanwyck rebuffing the clumsy advances of Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> or Humphrey Bogart chilling with Snoop Dogg? Oh my gosh. George Lucas will make sure that all happens, and this reporter is certain that it won't be the least bit tacky or disrespectful. <laughs> Do you hear that, Mr. Lucas? I'm on your side, buddy. Give me a call. George Lucas, George Lucas, I have one thing to say to you. I have one thing to say to George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Whoa. I'm just saying, <laughs> not happy. Not happy. <laughs> not happy with your stupid movies. Not happy with your goiter. Not happy with resurrecting dead celebrities. It's over. That is such a horrible idea. I, I hope it's just a vicious yeah, rumor. They, they did that for that... Uh, commercial, right? It was a vacuum cleaner commercial with Fred, Fred Astaire. Astaire dancing around yeah. the Swiffer or something. But, like, but, but mind this you, is like that, 10 was, years ago. that was like a real, that was real Fred Astaire footage. Right, real and then footage. they digitally integrated, they, right. the, they took the broom away or right. whatever the thing was and they put the, 
Yeah, this is uh, this is more on tar on on par with um, what they did in Sky Captain. You remember in Sky Captain? Sky Captain, that's right. How they had Lawrence Olivier at the end. They kind of digitally did a thing with him as kind of that Oz-like figure. I uh, that was horrible. They that also did that with Glad. They did that with the Oliver Reed. A little bit. A little bit because he had died. Yes, Oliver Reed passed away before they were able to finish Gladiator, and right. they had to digitally somehow resurrect him a little bit in the movie. In ways I, I couldn't tell you which scenes they actually did it in, and I don't know quite how they did it. But um, I'm okay with it there. But gee whiz, this just sounds terrible. I agree. I agree. Sorry, Chad. Terrible. Did it with Mel Blanc too. Mel Blanc, I believe they 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 saved his voice for Warner Brothers cartoons supposedly, and they were going to start re-digitizing his voice for things. Ooh. I heard that a long time ago. Well, that's really? well, that's also how Roger. But he Ebert did it. Does. He, yeah, He's... Roger Ebert. Does, that's how he speaks now. But Mel Blanc did it and allowed it. I, from what I understand, I'll have to wow. look into this again. But I seem to remember that. That's creepy. That is kind of creepy. That's... They can Sorry, do anything Chad, nowadays. Sorry, Chad. It's creepy. What can I say? I'm telling wow. the truth. All right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I right, respect Chad. you, Mark. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that. I got Chad's respect Sorry. for a second. Uh, all right, Chad. So there you go. Great news report, Chad Vader. Everybody. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Uh, as Thank always, you. Chad. Chad Vader. Well done. Bravo. All right. So uh, outstanding. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the Golden Globes? Just say, no, but say there was a, another news story. Say though. a four-letter word. But by the way, do you think the Golden Globes this year? Because the Oscars will. Do you think the Golden Globes this year? Do they have enough class to actually uh, give some sort of a tribute to Blake Edwards, who died today? Yes. You think they will do that? Maybe. Maybe. I think they won't, and here's why. Because all the, all the celebrities who starred in his movies are too old for uh, audiences to care. So Dick Clark won't care. You remember years ago, the, you, you and I both wrote letters to the LA Times that were both published independently, ripping on the Globes, and then they had their little, uh, their little Gestapo agent uh, call each of us separately to kind of uh, attack us for daring to call their honor into question? Yes. It was unbelievable. Wait, here's Their what happened. Their minions go out and to, to reinforce the idea that the Globes are legit. It was unbelievable. Wade and I both wrote letters to the LA Times uh, saying how the Golden Globes are crap. And the funny thing is that... Separately. We didn't coordinate this or anything. It was no. just like we both were so angry. We just sent these letters off and they both got published. They both got published back to back. Like in the yeah. same issue. Like there's hysterical. Wade, there's Mark. I know, it was weird. And so later in the day, I get a call. Is this Mark Kaiser? Yes, it is. My name is whatever from the Hollywood Foreign Press. Why did you say those terrible things about us? So I have a conversation with this guy, and I hang up the phone, and I call you. Yeah. And I say, watch out, you're going to be getting a call. I don't know how he gets our phone numbers, but it's, it's creepy that they're able to do that. It is it's true. It's like they have gave some little police state mechanism whereby they know their enemies, and they were watching you. That is true.